Okay, everybody, so we're gonna get into something today that a lot of people ask about. A lot of people are wondering, do I wanna get PMI on my mortgage? Of course, nobody wants it, but you have the choice. Do I buy now and I don't have 20% yet? Or do I wait until I have 20% and then just omit the PMI and just not have to worry about it? Well, what do you do in the meantime? There's a lot of things that go into it. One of the things is that there's things that are always changing. Interest rates are always changing. Property values are always changing. Rents are always changing. These things come into factor when you're thinking, hey, do I really care about saving a couple hundred bucks a month or whatever the PMI is gonna cost me? So let's get into some of the reasons why you may or may not want to wait. If you're interested in these kind of topics, we get into the stuff all the time, hit that subscribe button so that we can get the content to you faster. We can show you when we have new videos that come out. We get into home improvement stuff, real estate stuff. So if that stuff interests you, please hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, let's get into the reasons why you may or may not want to get that mortgage with the PMI payment added on. So let's start off with some of the cons. Let's go into some of the reasons why you may not want to get the PMI and you might want to wait. To get into the average cost of PMI, the average cost is a half a percent to a percent of the amount you're borrowing. Well, depending on how much you're borrowing, that could be a fair amount. So on average, I'd say it's between two and $300 a month for the average person. Of course, that will vary. You can do the math yourself on your situation. But that is one of the biggest reasons, obviously, is the cost. You have an extra payment. So if your mortgage was 2000 without that, now it's 2200 or so on and so forth. So it's just an extra added expense. And really, it kind of goes to nothing. It doesn't go to equity. It doesn't go anywhere that you're going to benefit from. It just allows you to get into the home. That is definitely the biggest and number one con of the PMI itself is the cost. Well, is it tax deductible? Well, that's the other thing. So prior to 2017, it actually was tax deductible. However, starting in 2018, they took that away. So now it is no longer tax deductible. Another thing that's kind of a drag about the PMI is the fact that it really doesn't benefit you at all. A lot of insurance policies like life insurance, auto insurance, that kind of thing, health insurance, these things actually help you. And some of those things can be passed on to people. Like say, if you pass away, you know, your life insurance passes on to your dependent, your health insurance might, or your social security benefits, whatever it is that you're paying into. Well, PMI doesn't go to you at all. So it's just protecting the lender. So if the lender is lending you a half a million dollars, let's say, and you're only putting 3% or 5% down or something like that, something under 20%, the amount of risk that that lender is taking goes up astronomically higher. The less money that you put down, the more risk there is on them, the more chance there is that you as the borrower are gonna default on this. Even though you might not default on it, and you may say, I'm never gonna default on this, I know I'm not going to, the fact that you have less skin in the game is causing the lender to wonder, and so they take out an insurance policy just to back themselves up, and unfortunately for you, you're the one that has to pay that premium. And then the last thing I wanna get into as far as a con goes on the PMI, and I'm sure there's more than this, but this is the main point. The PMI will continue on and on and on until you get rid of it. And so here's how you get rid of it. So you can either refi, which is kind of the obvious one. So once you reach a certain amount or a certain threshold, you can do the math on it with your loan person and say, if I refinance, I can get the a loan without PMI because I have X amount of equity now, which we can use as offsetting the amount that we're borrowing. And, and so the last con that I wanted to get into is basically, how do you get rid of this? How do you get rid of this PMI? I don't want to pay for it forever. Is there an end point? Well, the bad news is that it doesn't just end on its own. So the bank's not just one day going to send you a letter and say, okay, next Thursday is your last PMI payment. Congratulations. That's not how it works. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna keep charging you that PMI payment forever as long as the mortgage is good until you make an effort to get rid of it. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. And one of them is to actually refi it. So you can refi it into a loan, do the math on it with your loan person and say, I wanna get into a loan that does not have PMI. They're gonna look at your loan to value ratio and they're gonna say, okay, you have enough equity in the house now to where we can actually get you into a loan that doesn't ask for a PMI payment. The other way is that you can actually ask for the lender that you're using that has the PMI. You can ask that lender to reassess. They'll come bring an appraiser back out and they'll actually reappraise the house and see if it validates them taking that PMI off and removing that payment. It's not 
that easy to do. It may take some time. It may cost you some money, but you can actually do it and you can get out of it. The other option, obviously, is if you sell the house and you move into a different house, take the equity, and buy the new house. The new house may not have PMI. So, so anyways, let's get into some of the pros of doing PMI and not waiting. Okay, so the biggest one that I want to get into is should I wait or should I not wait? I can just rent a house. I can just rent an apartment. I can rent someplace, wait for the market to change, wait for me to save up enough money. I'm putting away a thousand bucks a month. Let's see how long it takes me to get 20% down. The problem with that is, first of all, not everybody's the greatest at saving money. That's the first thing. Some people are really good with money and some people aren't. Some people put money away religiously. Some people put money away and then they need something. They say, I'm just going to borrow from it and they take it. So it's really difficult for some people to save money. So if you're that person that you know, hey, I'm not the best at actually sticking with it. I'm not the best at having that willpower then maybe this might not be the best strategy for you. The other thing is if you wait and you rent, first of all, the rent money you're paying goes to somebody else's mortgage. So you're paying off their dream. You're not paying off your dream. The second thing is even if you're paying PMI and you're paying interest, you're still putting something towards the equity of your house every month. If you're renting, you're not putting anything towards equity of anything of yours. You're literally throwing it away. And if you move out, you own nothing in that property except the things that are inside of it. Something to keep in mind is if you're paying PMI and you're paying interest and you're like, I don't like paying interest or PMI, it's better than paying 100% interest on a rental property than paying some interest and some PMI, but also putting some of that money towards your principal. In today's market, the rental market is going so hot right now that actually the rental price might actually be the same price as paying your principal, your interest, and your PMI payment. So you should look into all your options before you make that decision. Another thing is if you say, hey, I'm gonna wait, I'm just gonna go ahead and rent for a year or two or three or four, whatever it takes me to save that money and get into that house, the only problem with that is, you know, you may be chasing something that's never going to get to you. Give you an example. If the house of your dreams is $300,000 when you start saving and you go ahead and rent that apartment, and you start saving a thousand bucks a month, that house that you loved at 300,000 might cost $450,000 in four years. So you might actually be behind the eight ball. Had you just paid that PMI and gotten into that house, you'd actually have built up $150,000 in equity. Of course, the market could go the other way, but if you look historically over the last 20 years or even 10 years, the market has always ended up correcting itself and going back up again. Unless it's some rare, rare phenomenon that has never happened in history, you're gonna have the market go up and you're gonna actually make money if you stay in the house long enough. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to pass up on a home opportunity if you qualify to buy a home simply because of the PMI because of the fact that you can actually build equity while you're paying your payment. That money you're paying in PMI may go into the toilet, may go nowhere, but that could translate into you making money on the asset that's appreciating in value, which is the house. Another thing is owning a home gives you and your family security. And this was something that was really important to me. When I used to rent a house for my family before we were able to buy a house years ago, I hated the fact that every year we got a rent increase and we had people come out and inspect our house paying top dollar for a house and we felt like we were living in someone else's house still. We felt like we really didn't have roots anywhere. We felt like the school that our kids were going to, we were gonna have to change every so many years because the rents got so high or our landlord was taking advantage of us or whatever. The market's always changing so the rents were going up and up and up and they were exponentially increasing. So when you own a home, you will have a little more security. Even if you're paying that PMI, I'll give you an example. If you start paying $2,000 a month for a house rental, in three years, that property could cost you $2,300 in rental costs. You're gonna end up paying that money one way or the other. Rental costs go up every single year, it seems like nowadays. Putting that money towards PMI and having it go towards the house that's appreciating in value and it's an asset that's yours, no one can just kick you out of, it's a great feeling. So that's another thing is just having that stability and having those roots is a great feeling and it's a really nice thing to have in these times. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out a little bit. I know this is kind of a tough thing for a lot of people. A lot of people are wrestling with this whole PMI thing. They're not sure if they should just wait or if they should get the PMI. I personally hated having PMI. I had PMI on my first mortgage and from then on I didn't have it. But the only reason I was able to get rid of the PMI on my second mortgage is because I took the first mortgage out with the PMI. A lot of times it's a stepping stone. It's a way to get into something. It's a way to get into a property that you can call your own. 
most people I think are able to get out of the PMI unless they're leveraging their assets and they're trying to move their money around or something like that. Most people can get out of it after their first house. You just wait for the property to appreciate. And then when you make your move, you can go ahead and allocate the funds and get yourself out of that mortgage into a conventional mortgage. So I hope this really helped you out. I'm not trying to give financial advice, just trying to help you understand the differences and the pros and the cons. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe again. It really helps us out. Otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next one. Thanks.